Finally, the set is complete. I've reviewed the 125mm saw, the 165mm saw, the 185mm saw, the 270mm saw. And today I finally complete the review set with the 235mm saw. Let's take a look at some of its features. It's got a 235mm blade, or if you live in a country with 50 states, that'll be 9 and a quarter inches. It has a built-in angulable dust port with detents at every 90 degrees. It has a removable front, which when in that orientation acts as a base extension for your saw. And when up this way, acts as a rip fence. It bevels to 60 degrees with detents at 22.5, 45 and 60 degrees. It has onboard tool storage as well as AWS. If you want to know what AWS is, take a look at this video up here in the corner. If you push this and this in, you can get it to reverse bevel to minus 1 degrees. And what do we have here? Two dials and two washers on slides. What are they for? They are for the track compatible base. This will go on a rail just like a plunge saw. And best of all, it has a lever at the front to do this. No more catching your guard on the edge of your damn timber. So it seems like a pretty good all around saw. But how deep does it cut? Right, so depth of cut at zero degrees or 90 degrees. We are looking at 86 millimeters at 22 and a half. We're looking at 80 millimeters at 45 degrees. We are looking at 64 millimeters. And at 60 degrees, we are looking at 46 millimeters. So even at 60 degrees, you can cut through framing timber in New Zealand, which is pretty awesome depth of cut. And look how close I got to that nail. Ooh. Could have been a bit of a disaster for the poor blade straight away, but gone down the full length of the nail. Yikes. Anywho, 86 mil on a vertical cut like this though, that's so close. Here's a couple of shots of bits of wood that I had underneath other bits when I was cutting them. And as you can see, almost all the way through two pieces of framing timber, but not quite. So why would you bother with this particular saw when you could get the 270 mil? Mmm. Does it have any redeeming features over that? Let's keep testing. How about some ripping? My freshly charged 4 amp hour battery is down one bar after doing 12 meters in this 45 millimeter thick pine with the tool set at its full cutting depth. Let's chuck on an 8 amp hour now and we'll see how much difference that makes if any.
But what about the 235mm versus the 270mm, the HS009G versus the HS011G? This one is 4000 RPM, and this one is 3500. 500 more RPM. Is the 235 gonna cut quicker? Are they the same motors, just configured slightly differently? Will this one have more or less torque than this one? Well, let's chuck an 8 amp hour battery on each one, and we'll go take them for another rip. So that was the fastest cut that I did with this saw and the slowest one that I did with this saw and still this saw beats this saw quite easily. This saw feels more powerful and yeah I just prefer using the larger one over the 235. What else is different about them? Well if we look at the bases they are the same width. They both have a groove for the rail. The blade seemed to cut a bit further out from the track than my other Makita 40 volt saws. If you look there, you can still see the timber. It's not hard up against the rubber edge there. The two sliding attachments for the rail are much closer together than they are on the 270. The 270 has a much better spacing. The 270 has, of course, a wider, sorry, not wider, longer base plate. Same width, different length. This one is about 50 mil longer. So if you were thinking about using the guide from the front and the other one, you can't, they're both different. But basically they have all the same features except this one is of course a little bit bigger and in my opinion a little bit more powerful and a little bit more useful because this one will cut to 104 millimeters. It'll cut through a rough sawn 4 inch 100 by 100 post in one pass. You can't do that with this one. This one is very hard to hold in one hand and do other cuts such as, well, like I'm doing in this shot here. So if you're trying to cut 4 by 2 6 by 2 or whatever, and you're just holding your hand, the guard's not quite as loose, it seems, on this one to this one. I mean, that might vary between actual tools. Uh, but, yeah, it's you need to use that little handle to, um, the little lever to trigger that. This one is very stiff. Um, so you need two hands for that, so your material has to be securely held, else you can't do it. So it's not a great just pick up and go sort of saw, I find. Uh, yeah, so as an all-round saw, I'd rather go for a smaller saw that you can just easily pick up and cut uh, four by twos and stuff. The only reason I would buy this, really, is because I'm cutting timber that's 75 mil or three inches thick all the time for instance if you're cutting those like sleepers that are like 150 by 75 if you're cutting them all the time then this is pretty good otherwise why not go with a 165 mil or a 185 mil both of which cut around the 65 60 65 to 68 millimeter range and that'll cut do all your framing and everything whereas this one yeah you only get that advantage if you're cutting something around the 75 mil you're unlikely to be cutting anything between 75 and the 80 what was it 86 or whatever that it goes to it's yes yeah, it's, it's a bit of an odd size i find these days especially when you've um, released this beast this saw is awesome what am i going to do with all this timber if you're new to makita and aws i'll give you a quick crash course AWS stands for Auto Start Wireless System. Now that should be ASWS really, shouldn't it? I don't know why they didn't just call it Automatic Wireless Start. Then AWS would have actually worked. Anyway, if you've got a tool with AWS capabilities, you put a chip in here. There's not one in there at the moment. I'll put one in any moment. And we'll go test it. Once your chip is in there, it will turn on a Makita AWS VAC, just like this. Chuck your AWS VAC onto Auto. That's now ready to go. 
Then once you've got your chip inside your tool, turn that on. Then all we have to do is pull the trigger. And your vac will turn on automatically, and as you heard, turn off automatically as well. Pretty cool, huh? If you want to know more about how the AWS VACs work, take a look up here in the top corner or down in the description for a link to the review of this tool. One thing you might find useful with this size is that being nine and a quarter inch, all the nine inch discs for grinders and stuff fit on, so you can cut metal with it or concrete. You can put on diamond cutting wheels such as this, and they're the perfect size for this saw. So there you have it, that is the HS009G, or if you are in the States, it'll be the GSH03. The 9 and a quarter inch or 235mm 40 volt circular saw. I think this would have been a fantastic cordless saw had they not released the 270 at the same time. Uh, they basically shot themselves in the foot, I reckon. They should have released this a year before the other one, and then they would have sold both of them. But being released at basically the same time, why would you choose this one over the 270? Some of you will have good answers for that question and I encourage you to leave them down in the comments so we can all learn what everybody uses different size saws for. Um, but yeah, I'd go for the 270 over this any day of the week because it has that extra depth of cut and if you're going to be lugging around a massive saw, you might as well have one that can do a lot more. So. Thanks again for watching. If you want to see any of the reviews of all those other saws, take a look down in the description and there might be some up here in the top corner. And I'll see you all on another Makita review pretty darn soon. Cheers, guys.